I had a pretty good sleep last night, but I'm feeling kind of tired in my eyes. I probably slept from 10 until about 6 a.m., so I'm waking up earlier, which is nice. It's nice not to go to bed at 10 and sleep until 10. I need 12 hours of sleep. And I'm gonna talk to Hardy Nutritionals later today, hopefully, and ask them about how long I should continue to take the liposomal vitamin C and then order more if I need to. And also ask about if I could do a ketogenic diet. And I read through that article in the Sun magazine. It's from the April 2017 issue and it's with Sarah Davido or David Dow. And there was one sentence in there that made me think of something that the sentence wasn't necessarily intended for. So it's a bit of an extrapolation. But the interviewer said, why is it important for people's extreme experiences to be regarded as meaningful instead of symptoms? And then Sarah replied, because they are meaningful. But what my brain saw when I read that question was, symptoms aren't symptoms, they're meanings. It's not that they're meaningful symptoms, it's their actual meanings. And it's just a bit of a distinction, but I think it's really important. And there are meanings we don't quite know how to make meaning of, and there are meanings we don't quite understand, and there are meanings we don't quite understand what they're trying to say and communicate. So it's a mystery of meanings in a way. Whereas usually when we're operating based on our thoughts and everything is going apparently smoothly in life, we understand the meanings of our thoughts. But when it goes beyond that, we don't understand the meaning. So there's something that we need to understand. If we just understood the meanings, then it would be within the realm of what we already know, and they wouldn't be jarring at all. And, and the jarringness of the meanings is what creates the growth or understanding. And we can only move through it with understanding. We can't move through it just by drugging these meanings. They're not symptoms, they're meanings. Or we might even call a sore back a symptom, but it means something. And if it's just a symptom of a disease, then you, you might drug the back pain all the while further injuring it. So it's the same with these so-called psychological symptoms, they're not really symptoms, they're meanings of some kind that if we understand the meaning and, and grow and heal and move through it, then that becomes part of our understanding. It's not something beyond our psyche. It's not a hallucination beyond our psyche. It's not something beyond. It's it is beyond when it comes up and we don't understand, but as we move towards understanding, it's no longer beyond, and so it's no longer something that is distressing. So I think reframing what somebody might call a symptom as a meaning invites the question, well, what is the meaning of this meaning? Or what is it saying, or what is it trying to communicate? Not just, oh, it's a symptom, so let's suppress it, let's take a pill. So it's not even that these extreme experiences are meaningful. They are meaning. And they invite us to look at something. And they invite us to look at something that is outside our zone of what we know and understand so that we might understand it. So that feels really important to me. And it goes along with what I was saying about how it's a meaning-making process. Well, it's a process in which other meanings arise in consciousness that we can then make meaning out of and integrate. And move through and move beyond. And then other meanings will 
arise. And we take our regular consciousness thought structure to be so meaningful, but when it breaks up, we actually have access to meanings beyond what our thought structures and beliefs tell us. So it's meaning beyond our programs. And maybe part of our programming is to suppress a lot of the meanings that happen in life, say through trauma. We're able to suppress them, but when that mechanism breaks open, then we have to make meanings of some of those traumas, or at least look at them. It doesn't mean we need to get stuck in them and lost in them forever, but at least look at them when we weren't able to at a different point in our life. Maybe partly because we're programmed not to. And then can we move into the flow of meaning instead of reverting back to the flow of thought that actually suppresses this flow and flux and evolution of meaning making and congeals and coalesces it back into a structure of just beliefs and thoughts. Because when our brain goes into meaning making, we really have to work. Our brain really has to work. We really have to pay attention. We really have to see. We have to wonder. Whereas when the thought structure is going on, we don't really wonder about anything. So that could be part of the mechanism of thought is to be efficient in not having to actually look at things. To just operate in a semi-conscious state. And partly because we don't actually want to be conscious of some of the things related to past trauma or the trauma of the world or what's going on in the world. So it prevents this information overload. It prevents us from seeing new meanings that might lead us to act in new ways. But one day we might see a certain meaning altogether and act in, in unity. We might see it as necessary to make meaning. Not just believe thoughts and believe ideas and believe meanings, but make it. Actually create it, actually channel it, not just make it by this thought plus that thought equals this meaning. No, but something completely new. And I feel like the brain needs to flush out old meanings in order to get in alignment with that state of just making meanings new and afresh. Because we've stored and suppressed all these meanings that we couldn't look at and then in psychosis it's like molting old meaning holograms and we have to look at them. But if we can look and not try to do anything then eventually we can just look at new meanings that arise that have nothing to do with the past. Yesterday I was walking and I was walking down a little path and all of a sudden a hummingbird flew right in front of me and just hovered and looked at me and then kind of did this thing where, where it kind of flew like this towards me like and it actually was like whoa and then it was kind of funny because it's this tiny little hummingbird. But it was just interesting that it actually hovered there for a little while and looked at me and almost came closer, not flew away. So psychosis is molting old meanings. And those meanings aren't the truth. But it's molting them so then we can be in contact with reality and not have a shadow of old meanings in our brain. It's shedding the brain damage from the false meanings of society and having to move through that.
And the thing with the symptoms versus meanings thing too is if we think something is a symptom then we go to a doctor and they tell us what that means. So if someone's hearing voices, they go to a doctor and the doctor says what that means. Oh, you have a mental illness and that means you should take a, this pill for the rest of your life. But if we can make other meaning out of it, maybe that thing changes. Maybe it changes in meaning or maybe it actually goes away or changes in how it comes about or there's some understanding there. But in order to understand something, we really have to look at it and wonder and not know. Because when we don't understand something, we don't know. And we have to understand that we don't know and look. And then by looking, perhaps some understanding will arise. And part of the process too is this new meaning that's arising when we don't understand it. It's outside of the understanding of what we already understand. So by that very process, it is the unknown making itself available to be understood. So not knowing is really important. And this could actually be the brain's invitation into the state of not knowing, which is important for seeing and making meaning and moving in the field of meaning moving forward. So even just understanding that we don't know is an important understanding. And not knowing and watching it unfold as opposed to thinking we know and putting it in a premature box. And that's what psychiatry does. It puts it in this box and then medicates it and then we never have a chance for understanding because even all the medication is going to change the way that we understand these meanings and it's actually going to warp the meanings into other side effects which are other supposed symptoms so when a medication causes a side effect which could actually be worsening of something like voices or or feeling in certain ways, now that drug has actually transformed the original meaning into a different meaning. So if we're now trying to translate these different meanings resulting from the drugs, we're not looking at the root of it. And so we're now always stuck in the periphery of meanings that were transformed into something through the drug. So we're actually looking at a transformation of the meaning to something else. And so we're not looking at the right thing anymore. So through that, we'll be always lost in, in an endless web of the wrong meanings because they're transformed by the drugs into side effects, which are different meanings than the original meaning. So I might have, say, five supposed symptoms or meanings, and then I take a pill, and now I end up with 10 side effects and not those five original meanings or symptoms. And maybe the 10 side effects are a little bit less than the original symptoms. But it's just translated it into something else. It hasn't really fixed anything. Now if I'm trying to fix those side effects or moving in my life according to this structure of side effects, I'm moving in the wrong field of meaning. And that's going to produce further and further and further disorder over time. Because eventually some other symptom or side effect will come up as a result of the medication transforming the original process. So in that way, it'll always keep perpetuating itself. And then we'll need another drug, and then we'll need to switch drugs, and then, because we're working on the wrong meanings. So how can we really, how can we really see if we're, having our meanings translated by psychiatry 
with the stories they tell us and then translated even physiologically in the reaction we have to the medication. It produces side effects which is transforming the original meanings and maybe diluting them and, and warping them into something a bit more bearable. You know, instead of extreme anxiety, now one might weigh 300 pounds. So that's going to change one's life, shorten one's life. Um, and maybe one will be dealing with the 300 pound thing and not the original anxiety. When if we're able to deal with the original anxiety, and I'm just using these words for convenience, like in sounding like medical symptoms, we wouldn't have to deal with the 300 pounds thing. So or deal with having to take diabetes medication later or something else. So it's just transforming it into something else. It's actually transforming the original energetic process into an actual physical problem in terms of a person not being ideally healthy because of medication side effects. And that funnels the person along a completely different trajectory of meanings. And yeah, it's just... I can see what I'm saying and I wonder if anyone else will.